welcome to the Music Corner. I'm your host, Jonathan Kiyu. Let's make you a better musician in the next 30 minutes. Today's program is going to focus on rhythm guitar. So grab your guitar, tune it up. I'm going to talk for a minute so you got time to, uh, to get your guitar. And if you don't have a guitar, if you don't play the guitar yet, stick around for the next 30 minutes. You'll see that playing the guitar uh, can be surprisingly easy with a little bit of practice. And uh, I think I'll convince you of that by the end of the program here. So we're going to talk about rhythm guitar today. Rhythm guitar is uh, probably the thing that guitar players are asked to do more than anything else. Rhythm guitar essentially is keeping a beat for the whole band. In a way, it's like playing the drums, except with some harmony to go along with it. I'll show you what I mean. I'm going to play uh, for you a little bit today to illustrate what we're going to be learning today specifically, which is called the boom chicka strum. I'll play for a minute to give you an idea what it's going to sound like. Here's the boom chicka strum. I'm going to use a G chord, a C chord, and a D chord for you guitar players out there. So that probably sounds familiar to a lot of you. Uh, classic rhythm that's used for bluegrass music, country music, folk music. For those of you who like other styles of music too, the technique we're doing today uh, gives you skills that you can use for a big variety of music. So if bluegrass music is your thing or country music is your thing, that's great. But even if it's not, stick around because you're going to find lots of ways to use our skill here. And I'm going to give you examples of that as the show goes on. Okay, so the boom chicka strum. Let's talk about where the name comes from. What we're talking about here is using the bass strings of the guitar, the three fattest strings, also known as the sixth, the fifth, and the fourth strings. And in between plucking those individual strings, we're going to be strumming on the remaining strings. Now, for a minute, I'm going to focus on just the, the G chord of my left hand. So um, grab your guitar, grab a G chord, however you prefer to finger a G chord. I use my middle ring and pinky. But we're really going to be talking about the right hand a lot today. So let's focus in on the right hand for a minute. My left hand has a G chord. My right hand here is going to illustrate the boom chicka strum. I'm going to do it in slow motion first. Here's how it works. With my G chord in my left hand, the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to pluck the fat string, also known as the sixth string, also known as the E string. A nice firm downstroke towards the floor. Now I'm going to follow that up with a smooth, light down up essentially hitting the three or four skinny strings. You put it together and you get that classic boom chicka sound. And that's where the name comes from. Boom chicka, boom chicka. Now, a question I get asked quite a bit is on the upstroke how many strings do I hit? Because people watch me play and they notice that I'm not, stroke, I'm not uh, strumming up on all six of the strings. So if you noticed, when I did my upstroke at the end there, I was really going up on maybe two strings, maybe three strings. So the final stroke in this procedure, in this boom chicka strum, the final one, boom chicka, when you're going up towards your chin, really hit one or two strings, maybe three strings, whatever you do, don't bother hitting all six strings on that upstroke. We'll talk about this more as, the, as, the, uh, as this program goes on. Okay, so let's review again. Right hand, let's focus in on the right hand. I still have my G chord with my left hand. I'm doing a down stroke on the fat E string and a light brush down up on the skinny strings. How many skinny strings? Well, really just two, three, four. Don't even worry about it. The idea, though, is contrast. To contrast this sound with this sound. Now, realistically, we're going to try to do the strum faster and faster as the program goes on. I want you to hear it smooth and slow and steady so you get the idea. Okay, the boom chicka strum. Now, there are lots of ways to uh, embellish on this uh, particular rhythm guitar strum. There's lots of ways to soup it up, to have fun with it, but you have to start somewhere. For those of you who are already familiar with this strum, stick around because in a minute I'll get going with my G, C, and D chords and you can play along with me at, uh, at home, do some lead guitar, have some fun, or maybe play different voicings of the G, C, and D chords up the neck. Uh, you know what I'm talking about. But for those of you who are beginners or maybe you're brushing up on your skills, do this along with me. The G chord boom chicka strum, okay? Now what I'm going to do, just to recap, because I want you to do this with me in a minute, 
I'm going to be doing a down stroke on the fat string, a light down up on the two, three, four skinny strings, okay? Don't worry about exactly how many strings. Here we go. I'll count us in. One, two, three, four. Okay, now hopefully that sounds a little boring and mechanical, right? I, I wouldn't be surprised if you're thinking to yourself, it doesn't really sound like a song yet, and it's true, it doesn't sound like a song yet, but don't worry, we're getting there, okay? So, before we go any further onto the C chord, or the D chord, or before we talk about any embellishments, here's an important thing. What I have found myself doing over the years is squeezing the pick a little bit tighter when I do that first heavy string low note. Give it a little bit of a squeeze so that note comes out punchy and clear. And then I just relax my hand when I do the down up. Can you hear the difference? Listen how punchy this sounds compared to the light down up. I'll do it a few times. It almost sounds like two different guitars, especially as you go faster. I'm going to do a little bit faster and hopefully I'll kind of give you the illusion of two different guitar players here. Okay, so a little bit of a squeeze when you do that first note, and then just relax, okay? I don't want you to think of it as a job, think of it as the opposite of a job. You just get to relax and do that nice light down up. Okay, so are you with me so far? We have the boom and then the chicka. Boom, chicka, boom, chicka, boom. At this point, you're probably ready to move on to something else, so let's move on. Let's do the same thing, but on the C chord. So grab your C major chord, okay? C major chord, let's focus on the left hand for a second. Take a look at my left hand here. The C major chord. Okay, hopefully you know a few of these basic chords already, but if you don't, it's easy to learn. There's my C major chord. Okay, now let's focus on the right hand for a second. Big change all of a sudden with the C major chord. The first stroke of the boom chicka pattern is now gonna be on the fifth string, also known as the A string. Big change. Number one reason why is because this note that's being produced is the note C, which is the root note of the C chord. Okay, so that note is going to be the first note I hit for my boom chicka pattern. Let's stay focused on the right hand here. Here comes the boom chicka pattern on a C major chord. Slowly first. So big change, but musically, it's a lot nicer than, than hitting any other string, at least to introduce this C chord. We'll get fancier in a minute. Okay, let's stay focused on the right hand for a second here. I'm moving on to a D major chord. Here's the right hand part for a D major, okay? Now here you have some options, but I'll tell you what I typically do. I do the same picking that I did on the C chord, meaning I hit the fifth string first, Or you could hit the fourth string first. As you get better at this, you're going to alternate between those strings anyways, and we'll talk more about that in a minute. Let's stick with the fourth string, since that's your open D string and it's a D major chord. Okay, so let's do a quick recap of, uh, of what we've done so far. Again, we're in the world of rhythm guitar. And trust me, rhythm guitar is what guitar players are asked to do more than probably any other technique or skill that you can name on the guitar. The world needs people to play rhythm guitar. Because you're providing the band or the singer with chords, which are the foundation of a song, and because the guitar is one of the few chordal instruments out there, a trumpet can't play a chord, a flute can't play a chord, that means singers need the chords and they need it to come from the rhythm guitar player or piano player. Those are the two main chordal instruments in our, in our musical culture. So the fact that we're focusing on rhythm guitar today, I consider this a pretty practical, pretty practical lesson here. And the boom chicka pattern is so useful in so many styles of music. Okay, so quick recap what we've done so far today. We've talked about the G, C, and D chords. That's G major, 
C major and D major chords. If you haven't learned these chords yet, or if you feel you haven't mastered these chords yet, don't worry. You got time ahead of you to work on those chords, um, but hopefully those chords are, are ones that you already know. Okay, with the G chord, you're playing the boom chicka pattern, you hit the fat string first, and then a light little brush down up. With the C major chord, you're going to hit the fifth string, also known as the A string, you're going to hit that one first. And with the D chord, we're going to hit the fourth string, also known as the D string. Okay, so that's a recap of what we've done so far. Now I'm going to take a minute and play. Uh, those of you who are experienced guitar players, you have your guitar handy, why don't you get your, uh, your G major scale ready or your G major pentatonic or whatever you feel like. Jam along with me, okay? I'm going to do a nice little um, G, C, D, C chord progression, okay? Here we go. Okay, now I was going kind of fast there for a beginner. I've taught a lot of beginners over the years. It's one of my favorite things to do. I wouldn't expect a beginner to start playing that fast right away, but I wanted you to hear the song become a little more musical. Hear our, our boom chicka strum become a little more musical. Because a lot of skills, a lot of techniques, when you do them slowly, they don't sound like music, you know? As you get faster, all of a sudden something happens and, and it begins to almost coalesce or, or merge into a musical sound, you know? Okay, so the boom chicka strum using G, C, and D, classic bluegrass folk music kind of chords. Now I'm going to pause for a second and talk about how this skill that we're talking about today is not simply a folk or bluegrass or country kind of skill. The idea of reaching in and hitting a specific fat string, whether it's the sixth or the fifth or the fourth, and then answering back with a chord sound or the remnants of a chord or some, some extra notes that particular skill can be used in all different kinds of music. In fact, there's probably no style of music you can't apply this skill to as a rhythm guitar player. So to give you a quick example of, um, of a popular tune of, in a different style of music that uses a, a somewhat similar technique, I'm going to play for, for you for a second. I'll tell you the name of this tune in a minute, but maybe, uh, maybe you can guess it. What I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be playing the fat string and answering back with the fifth and fourth strings. Okay, name this tune. Any guesses yet? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to move this pattern around, and, and if you don't quite know the name yet, you might guess this in a minute. You, uh, let's, for the fun of it, let's focus on my left hand. Again, we were talking about the boom chicka strum, and what I'm doing now is showing you how this boom chicka skill, the technique, um, is going to help you play other tunes too. Okay, so see if this rings a bell now. Okay, any guesses? Tracy Chapman, does that ring a bell? Give me one reason by Tracy Chapman. That, that's a, a song that's a guitar teacher's dream come true. Great song, popular tune, but it teaches some great skills. Okay, so the reason I chose that particular tune is it's not a uh, country or bluegrass tune, um, but anybody who's good at that boom chicka strum, you can totally apply that good aim and that good contrasting sound. Remember, I, I talked about contrasting before, that idea of the punchy with a, a lighter sound, you know, here's the punch, and here's the lighter sound. Okay, that contrast, all those skills that you, you hopefully are, are gonna pick up from, uh, from the boom chicka strum, you could apply it to a tune like that Tracy Chapman tune. Thanks, Tracy, from all the guitar teachers out there. Thanks, Tracy. Okay, um, by the way, for those of you who might have sort of recognized what I was doing with my left hand, let's focus on the left hand for one second there. Uh, what I was just playing on Give Me One Reason, 
I was playing an F sharp power chord, a B power chord, and a C sharp power chord. Okay, F sharp, B, and C sharp. It might have looked like my pointer finger was leaning over and, uh, and depressing a lot of strings, but I was just being relaxed about it. So all my pressure was really on the fattest sixth string right there. Okay, so for those of you who know how to play power chords, there's a little tune for you right there. Um, for those of you who don't know power chords yet, you have something to look forward to. Power chords are used all the time in, in a variety of styles of popular music. By the way, Tracy Chapman, while we're on the subject, she does a cool thing to get more mileage out of her power chord, which is she's got her F sharp power chord there, and she lifts her finger off for a second, her pointer finger, just her pointer finger, and puts it back down, and that's how she gets that nice but that adds a lot to the riff. And then she does it again down one, one string. You know, when she goes to the B power chord. Okay, so let's go back to our topic of the day, which is broadly it's rhythm guitar, but specifically it's the boom chicka strum. So by now you've got that rhythm in your head, the boom chicka boom chicka boom chicka kind of strum. Uh, I read a neat book one time, and the musicologist who wrote the book, he proposed the theory that popular music rhythms directly relate to the mode of transportation of the day. And I think what he was getting at was this rhythm, which certainly was around 19, let's say 1930s, 1940s, is a railroad track kind of rhythm, that classic Johnny Cash. There's your railroad track rhythm, boom, chicka, boom, chicka, boom, chicka, boom, chicka, okay? So if some of you kind of associate that uh, with a railroad track rhythm, that's going to help you practice this, you know, a day or two from now when you're playing your guitar and uh, you're trying to remember, what was that boom, chicka rhythm? Just remember that railroad track, boom, chicka, boom, chicka, boom, chicka, boom, chicka, kind of sound, okay? And then interestingly, the 1950s come along, automobile is, is really, you know, hitting its stride as a mode of transportation, beautiful automobiles from the 1950s. And there's Chuck Berry, or Little Richard, instead of doing that boom, chicka, boom, chicka kind of strum that we're talking about today, instead of using that kind of rhythm, there's Chuck Berry with a... And all of a sudden, we're in the modern day, you know, the automobile has, has come into its own. No longer are we back in the railroad. and popular music follows right along. So it's always been a theory that's interested me, the idea that, that modes of transportation, you know, mass transportation, public transportation, that the way people get around in a culture uh, can have an effect on the rhythms of the popular music of the day. And uh, I can see that, I can see that, I'll, I'll buy it. Okay, so we're talking about the boom chicka strum today. Now, so far, I've tried to keep things very simple because that's the best way to learn. We're giving you a good foundation today with this boom chicka strum. But it's time to get a little more interesting because when you hold down a chord, like the G chord or C or D chord, you've got a lot at your disposal. And you can make a lot of very interesting sounds come out of your guitar if you just push yourself a little bit more and, uh, and pick up on this next technique. So let's focus on the left hand for one minute here. I'm still holding down a G major chord. Now this is important. Some of you, when you play your left hand, when you play your G major chord, some of you use a, a different combination of fingers than I'm using right now. Take a look closely at the fingers I'm using. Again, this is the G major chord. I'm using the middle ring and pinky. Okay, my point of finger isn't doing anything, it's just out here, okay? It might look like it's pressing, but trust me, it's, it's out here in, in the air. Okay, there are lots of other ways to hold down a G major chord. But for those of you who have never done this, this particular grip before, you hold down your G some other way, please take a minute and do it the way I'm doing it here. It's not gonna feel comfortable at first. I've taught a lot of students and they have told me many times that this, this chord is not 100% comfortable, especially if they've done other versions of this chord. There are a lot of good reasons. I'm going to give you a little sermon here on this. We can call this Jonathan's G chord. Middle, ring, and pinky. Okay, so let's focus on my left hand for a second here. And here's why this G often, not all the time, but often is the absolute most practical way to hold down a G chord. I'm going to emphasize this a lot. Okay, middle, ring, and pinky. Now, you notice my pointer finger is free and available. If the next chord is a C or A minor or D7, I'm going to need that pointer finger to be available right there. Okay, 
So by holding down this version of G, look at how easy it is to get to a C chord. And believe me, there's a million opportunities, a million songs where G and C flow together. Here's my G, there's my C. Here's my G, there's my C. Notice how my middle and ring are essentially just gliding over to the skinnier strings. See how easy that the, the, the skinnier bass string, see how easy I make that look? Now I've done this for, you know, for many years. I've taught guitar lessons for 20 years and I've played for longer than that. If I make it look easy, it just from a lot of repetition, I've played a million songs that go from G to C. Okay, say the song goes from G to A minor, G, A minor, G, A minor, or G to D7, G, D7, G, D7, okay? Now, for those of you who have never done G with this particular configuration, middle ring and pinky, like I said, it's going to be a little bit awkward at first. Uh, in the long run, it's worth it. Now, many, many, many people, the way they first learn G, take a look at my left hand here, the way they first learn G is with index, middle, and ring. And that's great. There's plenty of times you're going to still be able to use that. Say the song goes from G to a E minor. Notice my pointer finger really doesn't have to do much, just sort of glides back a little bit. How about G to A major? But there are so many songs that go from G to C, uh, G to G7, G to A minor, like I said, G to D7. Any, any amount of time you spend working and polishing this new grip, you're going to be grateful for. Okay, so let's stay focused on the left hand for a second here. Uh, the boom chicka strum, Let's call this uh, the Boom Chicka Strum Level 2, okay? One big difference. I'm going to introduce another bass string. In this case, it's going to be the fourth string, also known as the D string. By the way, strings are numbered from the skinniest, number one, to the fattest, number six. So when I say number four, I'm talking about the fourth skinniest string. One, two, three, four, okay? All right, so let's talk about how we're going to go take this Boom Chicka Strum to the next level. The sixth string first my light little chicka strum. Then, here's the new thing, I'm gonna hit the fourth string and the chicka strum. Here it comes, six, four, six. At the beginning of the lesson today, we are doing just the sixth string every time. And that gets pretty old pretty fast. So the big change, six and four, alternating back and forth. And again, this is specifically for the G chord and a lot of other chords too. G, G7, E, E minor, E7, any chord with G or E in the name. I'm going to do it a little bit more for you. Again, you uh, guitar players out there, I'm going to stay in the G chord, but feel free to um, jam along if, uh, if you've got your guitar handy or any, any instrumentalist We're in the key of G. I'm going to stay in the G major chord. Six and four. what I said about squeezing the pick when you pluck the heavier string and then lightening up your grip for the chicka and pick up the speed. Okay, again, I wouldn't expect a beginner to be able to play that fast. That's not the point. In fact, a wise music student takes everything so slow, painfully slow, you know, but that's how you master a skill, and it's worth it in the long run. The quickest way to get to be a good musician is to practice slowly. Ironic, but true. Okay, so file that away in your head, the idea of an, what they call an alternating bass. Six string, fourth string, six string, fourth string. The first time I saw a guy do this up close, uh, college lounge, a great bluegrass band was playing, and I saw this young guy playing a bluegrass style guitar, and he was doing this so fast. cleaner and neater than that. And then of course he's changing chords and doing all this kind of stuff. Blew me away. I didn't know anyone could play the guitar that fast. And it sounded like, like two guitars. So get ready because we're about to shake things up a little bit. Change over to the C chord. Now we're going to alternate between the fifth and the fourth string. At the beginning of today's lesson we're doing just the fifth string when we do the C chord. So at the beginning of the lesson our C chord with the boom chicka strum sounded like this. Now it's going to sound like this, five to four. OK, 
bass. Yeah, you know, that creates a nice, pretty balance, you know, between the the two low notes. You know, we have a nice, you know, you're giving the listener something something to uh, to focus on there, but you're giving them some variety, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. Uh, imagine a piano player playing those two low notes with uh, his or her left hand, boom, boom, and their right hand playing the those sound in between, boom, ching, dong, ching. Boom, ching, dong, ching. A lot of parallels between the uh, guitar and the piano. Uh, okay, good news. The D major chord, you're going to pluck it, strum it exactly how we just did the C, meaning fifth string, fourth string, fifth string, fourth string. Five, four, five, four. I'm going to slow it down a little bit. Now you can see I'm keeping my eyes on my right hand as I play this, okay? Nothing wrong with looking at your hand while you play. I'm not looking at my left hand because I'm staying static over there, right? I call it static, you know? It's just my D chord. Some people get this notion that they, they're going to not look at their, their hands when they play. And that's an interesting goal, and it's, it's, it's a valid goal. It's not a priority. Whatever you do, don't prioritize that. You know, it can be an interesting challenge, but that's not, that's not, uh, that shouldn't be your number one goal. As you get better at a skill, yeah, then take your eyes away and see what you can do. But let's focus on where the action is. Today's action is on the right hand, you know, mainly. Okay, so I'm keeping my eyes on my right hand as I play here, because I don't want to mess up. <laughs> I want to give you a good product here. Okay, so now what I'm going to do, because we're getting close to the end of our program, hope you're having a good time. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to play a little bit with my G, C, and D chords. I'm just going to make up my own little tune going back and forth. Uh, but what I want you to focus on is two things. How my right hand slightly adjusts to whether I'm doing a G chord, 6 and 4, or C or D, 5 and 4. And I also want you to um, get a sense of that railroad track rhythm, boom, chicka, boom, chicka, boom, chicka, boom, chicka. And uh, you might even, um, there might be some songs that pop into your head, you know, as I play this. Um, you might even get some, um, you know, some memories. You might say, oh, that reminds me of such and such a song. Because there's an awful lot of songs with the boom, chicka, strum, and the G, C, and D chords with your left hand. All right, so before I do this, I want to thank you for watching. Hope you learned something today. A lot, of, a lot more good programs to come that will feature different rhythm guitar patterns and different uh, left hand chords. Uh, thanks for watching the Music Corner. Again, my name is Jonathan Q. Send me an email, uh, give us a phone call. I'm happy to answer any questions. I'd love to hear from you. So I'm going to play us out here with my G, C, and D chords doing the boom chicka strum. Here we go. <laughs>